Well, I have my Coyote CK3510 hydrostatic tractor here in the shop. And unfortunately, it's not just for maintenance. All right, I'll show you what's going on here. I got this light shining on it. But basically, just to give you uh, the general location where it is, you got your loader and you have the bracket that holds the loader on. All right, let's go down here, take a look at this bracket. All right, let's get down here. Now you see this crack? I don't reckon that ain't supposed to be there. <laughs> but you see it, it starts and it basically comes right along the weld here, drops down, follows this weld a little bit, goes to the other side of that weld, then drops down and follows the weld down along the bottom here. All right, there's a good view of it. Now you may ask, how does something like this happen? And I guess I asked that too. I mean, is it the operator? <coughs> and then how much is something like this going to cost to fix? <coughs> In all seriousness, yes, it's definitely broke. Um, now, I've been a mechanic probably 25 years working in a municipal environment, working on everything from weed whackers up to road graders, you know, and everything in between. And I do have to say, I understand everything breaks. Everything breaks. You know, I you do a video on something breaking, and you're always going to get these brand loyalist fanboys that are going to go, you idiot, you used it wrong, bah! and go on and on and on. Well, I got news for you. All brands break. You know, I'm not necessarily saying that this is the tractor's fault. Hell, it may be my fault. You know, I back drag. I've picked up heavy stones. If this thing would pick it up, I picked it up. And there's rocks where, when I could pick them up, I creeped up next to them, and I kind of centered them on the bucket, and I pushed them when the tractor couldn't pick them up. And there's logs I've picked up that, uh, you know, you're going down the trail with a backhoe on the back of the tractor, so you got a ton of weight hanging off the back, and the ass end of this thing still popping up off the ground. So I, in, in no way, saying that uh, I, I took it easy on this thing and I'm not saying that it's it's the tractor's fault. I'm just showing you this broke. <laughs> you know, I guess, you know, call me an idiot, call me whatever you want, but I guess I'm not 100% certain if it's my fault or if it's uh, just a defect, you know? If it wasn't cracked following these welds, you know, it would be, I would easily say, well, that's 100% my fault. But this, the way, the way it's cracked, it has me questioning it. So we'll just, we'll just say that. So in this video, I'm going to replace this thing. I've never had the loader off. And that could be an adventure, but it doesn't sound too hard. So first thing we'll do is we'll take the loader off. Alright, first things first, we'll put these feet down. Alright, now basically there's just a spring in here, so you pull up on the foot of it, and she comes down. Alright, now you got this bad boy. I'm probably going to have to pick the loader up a little bit to get her to, to set in there real good. I'll go get the other side done and we'll do that. Alright, now that I picked the loader up a little bit, you can look, see there's this arm here. So basically, you just get her in there. I'll do the other side. All right, now we'll set her down on that. All right, now I believe the next step is to take these pins out. Put the camera down here.
Now I'll get the one on the other side. All right, I've decided to get that off. I don't need to disconnect the hydraulics. There's still enough slack in the line over there. So I do more work than I have to. We're gonna take this bad boy off and see what we got. First, we will take off the bolts that hold on the bracket that locks in the back hole. Whoa, and the bolt goes flying. Don't mind me making noises while I reach for the bolt when you're chubby, that happens. <laughs> All right, that came off easy. Now we'll take off the four bolts that hold this thing on here and back. We'll leave that one on, just a little loose, just so I don't smash any fingers. <laughs> All right, now let's see if we can see these bolts. All right, piece of cake. Now, is it gonna pivot down when I pull that last one? She's heavy. <laughs> All right, let's put this new one on here. All right, now you might be wondering, well, how much does a new one cost if you break this thing? Well, it's gonna set you back about 620 bucks. So it's something you're not gonna wanna break all that often. <laughs> I'm going to final tighten them by hand.
so what do you think manufacturer's defect or operator abuse and operator abuse is kind of a strong word I mean a guy's living in the real world here so in the real world you don't ex if you're a normal person you're not gonna have a skid steer an excavator and a dozer and all this stuff you just got to use common sense when you're using your equipment I in no means use this as a dozer I have never slammed the bucket into anything you know I don't like charge in and try and doze through stuff but it's the real world if I dig a stump out with a backhoe and a tractor isn't strong enough to pick it up I'll use the bucket or the forks and try and roll that heavy stump away you know if I have a big boulder and I'm trying to move it if the tractor if I can't get the tractor to pick it up you know I'll center it on the bucket and just push it across the ground and things like that it's real world stuff you know some people in their comments are just not realistic so there's there's a line in the real world and abuse and it you know sometimes it can be a, a blurry line you know and when I backtrack I'm not going crazy and putting it at some crazy angle and going 90 miles an hour a guy's just smoothing off loose dirt <laughs> you, you know what I mean so I'm sure there's still gonna be comments like you're an idiot but you know guys living in the real world and he's got to work within his budget and unfortunately stuff's gonna break you know when you're when you're using it hard and I still am undecided as to whether this broke for me overusing it or whether it was just a defect you know with with where that break is it's suspicious to me <laughs> and I guess I never mentioned how I noticed it broke um, I actually I was changing from the forks to the bucket and the it didn't want to line up to get onto the bucket in the brackets on the front on the quick attach and I was like hmm what's going on here so I took a step back looked looked at everything you know like every normal operator does like when something doesn't go like it usually goes a person has to walk around take a look and make an assessment and I looked and oh yeah that's broke definitely broke but all right you know I guess the only other opinion I would ask is do you think it's worth trying to weld this piece you know, I obviously am um, not going to just chuck it. I'm kind of a hoarder. I'll throw it in the corner. And maybe one day I will stick it in a press. I'll bevel out around the crack and burn it back together. You know, see if I can melt it back together. But I think that metal is going to be kind of fatigued and weak that I'm not 100% certain that would be the greatest fix. But it would be... A spare that a guy would be comfortable to throw on if if this is a reoccurring issue you know like I said I'm not sure on this yet so uh, if you think it's worth welding this thing hey let me know what you think man and you know if you think it's operator abuse go hey man that's never happened to anyone else in the in the history of the world you have to be the biggest crayon eating heavy lifter there is and you're a moron and that's why it broke you know I, I guess that is what it is but not like I said I'm undecided well, all right thanks for watching